Hello learners, I am Garima Avasti and today we are going to talk about the topic the psychological aspects of language. So what do we mean when we talk about the psychological aspects? Psychological means brain related, related to brain. That is how is it that our brain processes language? How is it that we understand language? What are the effects that language has on brain or the brain accepts language in a particular manner. Is it that a particular place in our brain is responsible for language, whether it is speaking, listening or understanding or is it that it is scattered all over? So let us talk about this topic in a little detail. When we talk about the psychological aspects of language, we say that the brain and language are very deeply interrelated. Language is very deeply seated in the human brain. That is, when we talk about language, language processes itself in the brain where in a particular area we talk about speech, we talk about spellings, we talk about language, hearing, etc. So you might have seen it in maybe real life examples or in movies especially that if the part of a brain is damaged in an accident or if somebody is hit on the head and a particular part is damaged especially near the ear or something then it leads to language imbalance. That is the person even if he or she was earlier able to acquire language, was a good listener, learner, speaker, is now unable to do so because of that particular problem. So we can say that brain damage, not the entire but a particular part of it, results in a language imbalance. When I talk about language imbalance, it means that the person whose brain has been affected has lost the ability to understand. He or she is unable to understand language. And when I am saying that he or she is unable to understand language, it means that they are unable to understand any concepts because it is only and only through language that we make sense of the world around us. So other than that, there might be a time so the nerves are very finely and neatly connected in the brain. They are very near each other. So sometimes this disturbance might lead to the ability to speak. So maybe there is a time when the child or the person, whoever is affected, is able to understand, is able to process what you are saying, but is unable to speak. That is, they are unable to articulate themselves in the form of words. So the negation of this tells us that brain and language have a very interrelated concept that language is processed in the brain in a particular area and it is seated inside the human brain. Now, sometimes these problems also lead to distortion in word formation where the child or the person is unable to form words or are unable to form sentences. Sentence construction is a problem for them. This is also a problem. Any of these problems could also take place or you could see them in people with some sort of mental illness or the other. Rather than illness, I would say they are children with special needs. They have some problem with their mental ability to speak or to form words or to construct sentences. So, because some part of their brain has been a little damaged. So, when we say we talk about language and brain, there might have been instances where you would have seen children talking in phrases. Now, this also happens when the child is about to speak. They don't speak in sentences all of a sudden. They first will say, school, jana. That means that they want to go to the school, but that is normal. But when a child or a person is unable to construct sentences, even after a particular point of time when you have given inputs, when there has been exposure to an environment and they have grown of age, it tells you that there is some problem 
may be which lies beneath, which is in the brain. So they are unable to construct sentences. They will say some phrases or they will put words, they will point out to things to make you understand because they are unable to construct sentences. So if a child does this at a particular age where they say khana, khana, it is normal. But after an age where language acquisition has already happened and still the child is unable to process it, still the child is saying khana khana or is unable to make sentences, it means there is a problem. So, when we talk about language, we also talk about universal grammar. Universal grammar is a concept which means that a child is born with an innate sense of grammar, that is, we are wired to acquire language. There is a sense of grammar which is within us. You might have noticed it in case of your first language or the language which you are exposed to at your home and you acquire it. Generally, you don't know the rules of those gram of that particular language. The grammatical rules of that particular language, you won't be able to know it. But you still have a sense that this is a right sentence and this is a wrong sentence. After a point of time where you are at a stage where you are no more a child speaking in phrases, there is a sense that this is a right sentence and this is not. Mostly, we are not governed by any grammatical rules, but with a sense that this is right and this is wrong. It is your sense. So that sense which says that this hasn't been learnt by you, this is not something that has been grammatically taught to you by your teacher or your mother, but you still have a sense of it. So it is called universal grammar and this is what helps us in learning languages. In fact, you might have heard this fact that if a child at a very small age is exposed to multiple languages also, that is the father speaks some language, the mother speaks some language, the grandparents speak some other language, there's a multilinguistic thing going on in the family, the child is probably going to acquire all the three languages together. Even if it is not in Northern, the family and within the peer group, then also if the child is spending a lot of time with the, those group of friends or a particular friend who has some other language, it is highly likely that the child will easily acquire that language also. So this goes against the idea of child is a blank slate. We say that it's not that there's nothing, but because we as humans have involved so much and we have used language so much that now evolutionary, we are wired to acquire languages. We are born with a universal grammar, a sense of language which helps us to acquire any form of language. So whenever there is a language that we are picturing it in the mind. So if a child is there and they are, we are going to talk them or we are going to teach them about language, you start with words like mama, papa, which are people around the child. And then there are animals which you point out to, which is if it is a cat, then you say meow, right? Or that's a cat if you say that look at the cat. So generally you're pointing out at things, you're pointing out at objects. It can be animal, it can be people, it can be different objects. But when you teach the child a particular language, you don't ever start with sentences. You start with words and the words or things rather that can be easily picturized, which they are seeing it in a day-to-day -day basis. So this is what we talk about or we understand when we say that language is processed in a brain in such a way where it is pictured. We are picturing language in the mind and that is how we understand language. So that later on, the moment I see a cat, I'll say cat or a child is going to see cat, they'll say cat, it's a cat. And on the other hand, it comes vice versa also that whenever somebody says C for cat, I'll understand, oh, cat is that animal which says meow. And ultimately, what will happen is that that particular word 
is going to present a picture in my mind. When I talk about a cat, there's a picture in my mind of a cat. So language is how it is stored is it is in the forms of picture in the mind. Now, by this capacity, the child learns the languages spoken in her community by the time she is three or four. This is how they learn it. They will, after these objects, they are going to learn phrases, which you would have seen, and I've already spoken about it, which is khana khana. They will say you their needs because hunger is one of their needs. So they'll say, or they'll say khelna, or they'll point out to a toy and say de do. They start saying phrases, and then slowly and steadily, by the time they have reached the age of three or four, depending upon the environment, depending upon the exposure of language around the child, this varies a little bit, but the child will learn the language accordingly. So it's basically we are saying that before coming to the school, the child already knows language. Obviously, if you see, if you go to a particular preschool and even if it's the first day, you can talk to the child. So they've already acquired language, which is by this capacity of universal grammar, by the capacity where our brain is able to store language in the form of pictures and the child is able to learn languages without being actually taught those languages. You don't actually sit by and tell them the rules of those languages. You do point out at objects, but there are sometimes also when there's a surprise, you know, you have not taught the child something and because you're talking about it, you know, and one day the child is going to say, Pani, because you are saying Pani, the child has heard it multiple times and the child now knows that this is water, this is Pani. So this is how children acquire language. Language formation is done at a rule-bound manner at every stage. Language is formed rule by rule and this you know. So earlier the child is going to speak easy words like repetitive words which are two syllable words at the most mama dada papa these are the words that the child is going to talk about or speak and then slowly and steadily they are going to associate things with the sound for example a dog is not dog at first it's bow bow at first it's a meow at first and then comes cat and then comes dog right so Similarly, from these simple words to complex words, children are learning language, then they are learning phrases, and finally, they're able to speak sentences. And there comes a time when they're able to voice out their needs, their demands to you as a parent. And this is what happens, and this is what takes place when we talk about language. Now, we are going to talk about the process of language acquisition. I've been already talking about it, you have heard it in the past two slides already, but more concretely, how do we humans acquire language? How does a child acquire language? Now you must notice I'm not using the word learning here. I'm not saying how are we learning language. I'm saying acquisition. I'm saying how are we acquiring languages? So basically, I mean to say that language isn't something that we are going to teach the students, that is being taught to the students, where I'm sitting with a text or a notebook or a chalk and board and teaching, okay, see, this is that, this is this. But rather, language is acquired. Obviously, we teach children alphabets, which are A, B, C, D. But speaking of a language, the communicative basis, what is the importance of language? It is communication. So that thing has already happened. That level of acquisition has already taken place. So how does this take place? Language acquisition basically has three steps, three things which make it happen, language acquisition. One is universal grammar, which I talked to you about in detail, where the child already has a sense of underlying grammar. Then there is psychological readiness, which is that at a particular stage 
in a child's life, the child will be ready for something. And I've already also told you about this, that from simple to complex words, from different objects to phrases to sentences, and what is the amount of readiness? It also depends, is my child ready psychologically to acquire language, right? So if, it's, if the child is too small, we can't expect him or her to say phrases. They'll come to it, but after a particular stage. So each age has each stage of language acquisition at which the child is going to learn that language. Now these stages or ages are generally in brackets. It's not like at the age of three, the child is going to know sentence construction. That doesn't happen. We generally take an idea that round about, say, three to four, the child is going to be able to say sentences, simple sentences, because this readiness also takes place due to multiple factors, which are is the child being spoken to? The more the child is exposed to languages, the more he or she will be able to acquire the language better. In fact, the children who are read out stories, it's called a read aloud, where a parent or maybe a teacher sometimes will open a storybook and they will read out the stories to the child. Now here, the child is listening to the language, is seeing words printed in the book. And this is how they are also somehow being introduced to standard language, which is the written language in the textbook. And you know that oral and written languages are two very different things. So this child, a child who is being read out to, will be easily able to acquire language is a much at a much earlier stage than a child who has never been read out to, right? So this also happens and hence comes our third point which is environmental exposure. Environmental exposure also affects the language acquisition. If around you a lot of people are talking or they are talking to you, then language acquisition is quicker, it's easier. Rather, if you live in an area or let's just say a condition where your parents leave for work and they come back in the night and they come home, they cook food, they eat and they sleep. There is no language taking place at home. Maybe there's a caretaker at home and he or she speaks a little or if you are a baby, then they won't talk to you. They'll talk very little to you and maybe she's speaking in some other room with somebody else and you are out of the earshot. So that happens, you have never been exposed to language at all, whether it be written or oral. So in this case, language acquisition will be very late. So all of these things combined help a child acquire language. And so we understand that even before coming to the school, even before in fact coming to the preschool, the child has already had a sense of language. The child has already passed the stage of language acquisition. And now the school is going to provide a tutored step for this language acquisition, which means that the school is going to now make that oral language into a written form is going to make that formal, informal thing into a formal thing. It will give a tutored step where they start by teaching you about the alphabets. They start by teaching you about the sounds actually. That is how it should be, where the child is able to recognize sounds. So this is what, when we talk about uh, the psychological aspects of language. This is how a child acquires language. And this is all for today. Thank you very much and we'll see you in our next lecture.